Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this busy day, and we thank the Lord for you joining us here today. I'm going to give you sort of a walkthrough of the week so far. The reason I do that is not just to give you information, but I hope it will give you some inspiration because I believe God will inspire us if we will follow him and listen to him. And I do apologize for any noise in the background. Hitchhiker, would you pull that door closed? Uh, we've got some construction going on outside. And we don't have any choice. <laughs> so Hitchhiker's going to close the door. And... Uh, I'm going to start the computer, and Hitchhiker's going to watch over there for the uh, volume and see if we're getting the clicking off and on where the lights, and we are, and so that means we're live and up, and we do thank you. Now, I want to remind you that if you'd like to talk to me, if you hear me say something that you need more instruction on or you hear something that inspires you or does not inspire you, you're welcome to give me a call. Our phone number is right here on the desk with us, and that is the phone number for me personally and for 24-hour-a-day prayer. Back in the year 2000, we started the 24-hour prayer line. We called it telephonic prayer, telephonic prayer, meaning that it was uh, on the telephone, and meaning that it was prayer. And so at that point, we want to remind you that we've been doing that for quite some time. We're not the new kids on the block. <laughs> we didn't just start this a little while ago. We started it back in the year 2000. On my speed dial, I have telephonic prayer. The number for telephonic prayer, if you'd like to call it, is any time. What does that red signal there say, Hitchhiker? I can't read it from here. Whoops, it went off, so that's okay. That's okay. If it pops up again, tell me what it says. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to back up and we're going to start the week over with you and let you know what's going on, let you know how you can participate if you so desire. We start the week every week in Washington, D.C. at 7.30 a.m. 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we start our week together with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is started by a pastor friend of mine, brother in Christ, fellow Christian, fellow prayer warrior, and he heads up a church there in Washington he's a pastor but a part of their ministry is the National Prayer Embassy prayer tour National Prayer Embassy prayer tour and if you would like to go on that tour you're welcome to do so all you got to do is get in touch with me and I'll give you the number to call and if you're ever in DC on Sunday morning I would encourage you to call Jeff Wright and let him know that you would like to be a part of the prayer tour at 7.30 on Sunday morning. That's how we start our week. We start our week with Jeff Wright, Wiley Drake, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Typically, Jeff Wright is in Washington, D.C., in the National Prayer Embassy prayer tour van giving a tour of our nation's capital. And that's absolutely free, doesn't cost you a dime. If you'd like to donate to that ministry, you're welcome to do so when you go with that tour and go with Jeff on that tour. But there's no charge. It's about a two hour tour. Starts at 7.30 and is typically over at 9.30. 
Now you say, well, I'm not in D.C. Well, I'm not in D.C. every Sunday either. However, I join the prayer tour. I'm on the prayer tour every Sunday morning at 7.30 Washington, D.C. time. Now, when I'm in California, that's 4.30 California time, but I still join them by telephone. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. Whatever time zone you're in, it's 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can be there, it's what I call boots on the ground. If you can't be in Washington, you can be prayer in the air. The way you become prayer warrior in the air is you pick up your phone and you call 605-468-8016. And when you call that number, it will welcome you and it will ask you to identify yourself and put in an access code. Now you only have to do half of that. You don't have to identify yourself. You can remain anonymous. But the other half you do have to put in. Once you call 605-468-8016 and it asks you to identify yourself, you can just ignore that and move on but you cannot ignore the second part. The second part is to put in your password or to put in your access code, actually is what it's called. The access number for 605-468-8016, the access code is 399-430-0. Three nine nine four three zero pound, and once you hit that pound, it will welcome you, and then you will be able to hear what's going on in the National Prayer Embassy van with Brother Jeff Wright, and you will also be able to hear what I say on the prayer line, or what you say, or anyone else that would like to call that number, put in that access code, and be a prayer warrior with us. And start your week right with Jesus, Jeff Wright, Wiley Drake, and other prayer warriors. That's the beginning of the week on Sunday. Now, let's move through the week. On Monday morning, on Monday morning, you can join us for the Congressional Prayer Conference telephone conference call number again, same phone number, same access code, but we do it at 8 a.m. Washington, D.C. time. I'm sorry, 11 a.m. Washington, D.C. time. That's 8 a.m. California time, but it's 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so you can start your Sunday right, and you can start your Monday right, and go through every week the same way. Now, let me tell you what happens on that prayer call. On that prayer call, when you call the conference call number and put in your access code, that will be 1130 a.m. in Washington. And you can participate and pray with us a prayer that our dear friends in Washington have written. And they wrote this prayer based on their desire to be prayer warriors, but also based on their desire to follow the word of God. Now, we may deviate a little bit, but by and large, everything that we do on the Congressional Prayer Conference and on the telephonic prayer meeting, we try to get it in line with, first of all, the Word of God, and second of all, the will of God. The first thing we do at that 1130 hour is do what they call in Washington the call to fall. 
And if you'd like to look that website up, it's C-A-L-L, -L, the number two, and F-A-L-L, -L, call to fall. And we pray that prayer. You will hear us pray the prayer as you're going to hear me pray it in just a moment. And I hope you will call us in the mornings and say it with us. But right now, I'm going to say it by myself, and I would ask you to simply agree with it. But the call to fall prayer, and you can go to call the number two fall dot com, and you can see that handwritten prayer that was participated in by Tony Perkins, Peter Bynum, Christina Bynum, and uh, other folk there that serve the Lord at the Family Research Council. So the call to fall that we say every day, Monday through Friday at 11, is this. Quote, I will answer God's call to fall on my knees in humility and seek his face in repentance so that he might forgive my sin and heal our land. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're astute in your memory, you will remember that that's basically what 2 Chronicles 7.14 says in the Bible, but that is the modern-day version of it there uh, put out by Family Research Council. You remember, though, of course, that that is copied and mimicked after 2 Chronicles 7.14, which says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, God said, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. So that is the original scriptural version, and the version that we prayed is a Family Research Council version and a Wiley Drake version and other people. So we start our day at 11 o'clock with the call to fall. And then shortly after we do the call to fall, we move into the second thing that we do every day, and that is to name each and every elected senator. And we pray for them by first and last name, all 100 of them. And we have a dear, sweet sister that's a deputy prayer warrior that leads us in that alphabetical list so that I and you don't have to remember the first and last name of each of the senators from each of the 50 states. Judy Aarons, a dear prayer warrior, sister in the Lord, leads us in that alphabetical list she doesn't have it memorized, but she has it in front of her. <laughs> and so she leads us in the alphabetical list of all 100 senators by first and last name. And then from there, she moves into another list that she has in front of her, and that is the list of all of the Supreme Court justices, the men and the women, by their first and last name as Supreme Court justices. And we pray for them by first and last name at least, and sometimes even more information is prayed about as well. Now, once we do the Supreme Court justices, we move then to the other side of the Capitol, and that is the United States House of Representatives. And we pray for them by first and last name also. Now, let me hasten to say, we do not pray. There's 435, I think. We do not list every one of those by first and last name. But for Judy and the hitchhiker and myself and others that are on the line, we call out our own members of the House of Representatives. In my case, I pray for Ed Royce and Alan Lowenthal, and Tony Cardenas, and Grace Napolitano. And we also pray for what we refer to as the deep 
dark state. That is what the former alien, Barack Hussein Obama, Barry Satoro, that dark state is what he started and we pray for and against that. And after we pray for the House of Representatives, we also mention each governor of each of the 50 states and pray for the governor. And from there, we move into another segment of the beginning of our day with praying the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms. Now, what we do is we take the date and multiply it by five. In today's case, for example, being the fifth, we multiply five times five, and that's 25. And so we start praying at Psalms 25. Then we pray Psalm 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29. And we pray those Psalms word for word, every word, every dot, every curve. We pray for those after we pray for the House of Representatives. And once we finish praying the Psalms for the date, we then move in to follow the recommendation of the chaplain of the United States Senate, who is a gentleman by the name of Barry Black. Barry Black is the senator, I mean is the chaplain, excuse me, Barry. Barry Black is the chaplain of the United States Senate. And he suggests to himself, to his family, to his staff, to all senators, to all Americans, that you begin your day with the psalm for the date. And so, I mean the proverbs, excuse me, the proverbs for the date. And so, today's proverb is proverbs Number five, that is a recommendation of the chaplain of the United States Senate. So we work our way through all of them, and we pray through Proverbs, and that begins our day, and that takes us a little less than one hour. And we would encourage you to join us to pray for the call to fall, to pray for the 50, sen 50 state senators, to pray for the Supreme Court justices, to pray for the House of Representatives, to pray Psalms, and to pray pro Proverbs. And that is how we begin our day, every day, every day, Monday through Friday, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's how we do our week. Now, I did mention to you that at 7.30 in the morning on Sunday, Brother Jeff Wright, the National Prayer Embassy, does the tour around Washington, and I do it by telephone. Now, the way you want to join that tour, the way you want to join the starting and the praying, you go to the number for telephonic prayer. And telephonic prayer is 605-468-8016. And then we also take phone calls. But this says I missed a phone call, and I'm not sure I missed two of them. <laughs> Not sure what that's all about. I didn't mean to miss them, so you'll have to call me back if you'd like to talk with me uh, on the show. I see a number here in the 253 area and one in the 620 area. And if you'd like to call me back, by the way, anytime we're on the air, anytime we're on tour, anytime we're doing anything, you can always reach me on 714 865 8132. Now, Brother Jeff Wright not only does the National Prayer Embassy prayer tour in Washington, but he also does it in other places. Now, if you go to the National Prayer Embassy uh, website, you will find out more about it. But a number of years ago, Brother Jeff began to work with Kenneth Copeland and their organization and they do a prayer tour of different cities. Prayer tour for Tulsa, prayer tour for another city or so. And so, Brother Jeff Wright does that, and a number of years ago when uh, 
Jeff Wright came out here to Los Angeles to do a Los Angeles prayer tour. Uh, we decided to take up on that and be a part of that and to let uh, us do a Hollywood prayer tour. And so this Sunday is the annual Hollywood prayer tour. Now, if you would like to be a part of that, that prayer tour begins at 8 o'clock this Sunday morning. It will be leaving and returning to the main front entrance of the Anaheim Hilton Hotel here on West Convention Way in the city of Anaheim, California. So we will be doing that, and if you'd like to be a part of that, we would encourage you to uh, indeed be a, a, a part of that particular situation. Now, I'm going to give you uh, a gentleman's name, if I can come up with it here in just a moment. Um, his name is Peter. His name is Peter, and it's K-A-S-O-L-O-I. Casaloi. Casaloi. Peter Casaloi. Now, on Sunday morning, that prayer tour will begin at the Hilton Hotel. The driver for the prayer van will be Peter. And we're asking Peter to take on a new responsibility of doing a Hollywood prayer tour once a month. And this one is this Sunday. If you'd like to be a part of it, you can do that. You meet them at the Hilton Hotel uh, there in Anaheim. And they'll bring you back there as well. Now, you'll have to pay for your own parking and all that kind of thing. But the tour is absolutely free. And so we thank you for that. And I'd ask you to pray. Mr. Peter Casaloy. Mr. Peter Casaloy is being designated by me as his pastor to be the director. He's going to be in Hollywood, so... People like to be directors in Hollywood. Well, Brother Peter is going to be the director of the Hollywood Prayer Tour. The Hollywood Prayer Tour. And they'll be praying for a couple of hours. And then they'll be in church and you'll be able to hear Brother Jeff Wright speak at our 11 o'clock services here at the First Southern Baptist Church. So... That's how our week starts, and that's where our week goes. We broadcast seven days a week, but we begin our services, we begin our ministry on Sunday morning at 7.30, California, I mean 7.30 Washington, D.C. time. And for me, way out here on the West Coast, that's getting up early. I have to get up at 430 so I can be a part of the prayer tour if you're in Texas it's a matter of 630 you got to get up and if one of our chaplains uh, chaplain Rudy Davis or his dear wife chaplain Aaron Davis want to join the prayer tour they have to get up there in Texas at 630 in the morning and uh, we have to get up here at 430 but anyway that's what we do during the week we are the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. We're not the new kids on the block. We started back in the year 2000. And all of these things that we've been doing are what the Lord has led us to do. The Lord led me to start the Hollywood Prayer Tour, and due to my schedule, I wasn't able to do it every month. And so that's why I asked that I appoint a director for the Hollywood Prayer Tour, and that is none other than Mr. Peter Casaloy, and we thank the Lord for him. Now, we do also want to remind you that there's one other thing that we pray about. I gave you that long list a while ago of who we pray for, and one of those on the list that I did not mention is what we call first responders. A first responder is a person who, if you call 911, they will ask you, do you want police, fire, or paramedic? First responders, ladies and gentlemen, are members of the military. They're there to respond 
24 hours a day, seven days a week, in the case of an attack on America. And then the devil attacks people in other ways, car wrecks, fire, home fires, other things. And so when uh, medical problems occur, first responders, paramedics, doctors, nurses, also the other first responders are those that drive the truck, drive the tow truck, drive a, a bus, drive a, a, an ambulance, whatever they are, they're first responders. And as the Congressional Prayer Conference chairman, I have asked people to allow me to digress into my history of remembering the old cowboy movies, remembering John Wayne and all the old sheriffs. And when the bad guys would come to town, the sheriff would go out to meet them. And when he did, quite often he would realize it was a bigger battle than just one sheriff could handle. Well, we decided in 2000 that we would pray America back to one nation under God. And that's a big job. And so I, as a chairman, as the sheriff of the thing, said I need some deputies. So I have appointed deputy prayer warriors. The way you become a deputy prayer warrior is real simple. You agree to pray on a regular basis. Now, what is regular? That's between you and the Lord. You do your best, God will do the rest. But if you will agree to be a regular prayer warrior and follow the word of God, I will appoint you as a deputy prayer warrior. Now, there's two ways you can get involved as a deputy prayer warrior. Number one, we've already talked about prayer in the air, how you can be a part of prayer in the air. That's how you can be a deputy prayer warrior. Another way you can be a deputy prayer warrior is boots on the ground and we have had that occur already and right now because one of our deputy prayer warriors brother Gary Mayo has walked in boots on the ground Gary come on up grab this chair and uh, we're going to get the microphone over to him and we're going to get him to have a seat and I'm going to introduce to you ladies and gentlemen uh, one of my deputy prayer warriors Gary Mayo and uh, I have no trouble remembering his last name because Pastor Drake is known as the Mayo King. I use mayonnaise on everything. I put mayonnaise on my pizza. I put mayonnaise on my chocolate sundae. I put mayonnaise on everything. But this gentleman's name is Gary Mayo, and I want to have him tell you a little bit. Like I said, he's a prayer warrior because he agreed to pray and because he wanted to be a deputy prayer warrior and he agreed to pray on a regular basis but he has sort of developed his own special deputy ship for being a prayer warrior and brother Gary Mayo good morning and share with our friends your specialty will you yes my name is Gary as pastor said and my specialty is uh, you know I pray for a lot of things but my specialty is our our first responders pastor was just telling you you know what that is uh, these are people that are close to my heart, the people that, you know, run into gunfire when people are running away. They run into burning buildings when people are running out. Uh, a shining example is uh, all the people in Houston, in the Texas area, uh, first responders from all over the region, all over the country showed up. They don't get paid. They just do it. And, you know, they, they help their fellow man. And, and uh, you know, they just, uh, I just love these people because they they do what I've never done. I've never put on a uniform and served, and, uh, you know, I, they don't get enough appreciation, and, you know, I, I keep them in my prayers every day. Amen. And I'd like to pray for them right now. Please do, my brother. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the many blessings you give to us this day and every day. Father, we ask your blessing, first of all, on our pastor, Wiley Drake, as he faces the, the challenges set before him. Uh, we pray that you'll give him your strength and wisdom as he fights the forces that are against him, uh, Satan and the minions he's sent here to, to be his adversary. Uh, we ask you to give him your strength and wisdom, help him fight through this. Uh, and for his, uh, his helpers here, his, uh, his backup staff, uh, Brother James the Hitchhiker, Brother Will, all the people here that back him up and, and help him fight the good fight. 
We ask your blessing on them and your, your strength and wisdom for them also. We also pray, Father, for Pastor Andrew Brunson in a Turkish prison. We pray that you'll bring him home to his family soon. And we pray for all our first responders, Father, all of our military, both active duty, our veterans, the ones here, the ones overseas, uh, all of our law enforcement, federal, state, and local, our firefighters, uh, EMTs, and paramedics, our ambulance drivers, tow truck drivers, the prison guards, the border patrol, the harbor patrol, all the men and women that, that protect and serve their country and their community. We ask your blessing on them, Father, and your hand of safety over them as they you know, try to keep us safe. For those injured in line of duty, we ask your hand of healing over them, bring them back to health, make them whole again. And for those who've lost a loved one in the line of duty, Father, we, we pray for them. We, we ask that you, you know, ease the pain in their heart, uh, help them deal with their loss, help them cope with their loss, and help them understand that one day you're going to call them home to be with you. And when you do, Father, uh, they're going to see their loved ones once again. And we ask this all in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Gary, thank you so much for sharing that with us as a deputy prayer warrior. Now, Brother Gary has to work for a living, so he comes in here, boots on the ground, and then he splits and becomes prayer in the air. God bless you, my thank friend. You, God bless you. Have a great day, and, and uh, may the Lord bless you as you serve him uh, day by day and moment by moment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about the schedule of the Congressional Prayer Conference, the schedule of Wiley Drake, the schedule of the telephonic prayer meeting. Now, let me give you some phone numbers again. If you would like to get in touch with me personally, my personal cell phone number is 714-865-8132. If you'd like to email me, my email address is Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y-D-R-A-K-E, -E, all lowercase, Wiley Drake, at gmail.com. I tried to keep it as simple as possible, but it's simply Wiley Drake at gmail.com. So email me or phone call me and be involved in the prayer meeting. Now, the telephonic communications prayer line for the early morning prayer meeting, uh, for the prayer tours and so forth, that prayer line number is 605-468. 8016 605-468-8016 now when you call that number you need an access code the access code for that 605-468-8016 that access code is 399-430 pound 399-430 pound and we would encourage you to call us, email us, and let us pray with you, and let us pray for you. And uh, please communicate. Right now, for example, if you call me on 714-865-8132, I personally will answer my cell phone and pray with you and pray for you. Now, as we move on before anybody else calls, uh, we're going to move into what I believe is part and parcel of the ministry of the church that God called me to here almost 30 years ago. You see, the Lord called me to be the pastor of the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park. And I came here on October the 1st in the year 1987. 1987, October the 1st, I became the pastor here. And one of the portions of Scripture that I used to begin my ministry and a portion of scripture that I used to carry out my ministry even these many years later comes to us from the beautiful pen of David the psalmist and in Psalm 41 
David said to Wiley, and God said to Wiley, Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Didn't say coulda, shoulda, woulda. It said the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Believe you me, I've gotten in trouble over the years. But so far and continuing on, the Lord will continue to deliver me. The Bible says there in that same Psalm 41, The Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, will preserve him. And that word preserve could just as easily be translated protect. The Lord will protect him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou will not deliver him, will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. That is God's promise to me and God's promise to you if you consider the poor. The Lord, he said, in reference to those of us who have a heart for the poor, the Lord Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, will, didn't say could, but will strengthen him. That's where my strength comes from. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of his languishing. Upon the bed of his languishing. And languishing could be translated to the word sickness. And it said, thou wilt make, after it says languishing, it says thou wilt make his bed in his sickness. That could be translated the word restore. When Wiley makes mistakes, when Wiley gets stuck on stupid, when Wiley does things that's not good for him, the Lord will restore me based on his promise. In fact, David said, I said, Lord Jesus, be merciful unto me. And I say that quite often. Heal my soul. Now, what is your soul? The mind, the will, the intellect. And David said, I will say to the Lord, Lord, be merciful unto Wiley. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. I'm a Baptist preacher. I tried to be a godly husband for 48 years, one month, and 14 days to the same woman. I'm a widower now, and I'm trying to be a godly widower. But when I do my own thing sometimes, I sin against the Lord. My enemies, David said, <coughs> speak evil of me. I have evil speaking people of me all the time. They say, when shall he die? Why don't Wiley just go ahead and give up and die and his name perish? Well, my name will perish, but the name of Jesus Christ will never perish. And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise hurt. I've got people in my own church. I've got people on church property that would like to hurt me right now. That's why we try to keep the door locked quite often, because we've had some threats. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him, and now that he hath, he shall rise up no more. People are praying for my demise. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, David said, which did eat of my bread, and hath lifted up his heel against me. We took in a man over two years ago, and we have fed him with our food, with our bread, 
and now he's attacking this church and this pastor, our familiar friend. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requite them. That means to repay them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because my enemy doth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in my integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and amen. Judge me, O God, David said, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. And we thank the Lord for his holy and righteous word. And Father, I would pray that you would be with all of the churches that fellowship with us and minister here with us and direct their ministry to coincide with our ministry. I just saw our local Hispanic pastor, Jerry Moran, pray for him, lift him up in prayer as he ministers to those who speak Spanish and minister to him and through him to this Spanish congregation. They've been here with us over 10 years now serving the Lord Jesus Christ and we thank the Lord for that well ladies and gentlemen we've been on now with you for about 45 minutes and we're going to come to uh, what I call sort of a screeching halt here in a little bit because we're going to go off a little early today we would like to remind you two ways to get in touch with me quickly number one call me 714-865 8132 714-865-8132 and then if you'd like to write me something by the way you can text me on that number as well but if you'd like to send me an email my email is Wiley Drake W-I-L-E-Y D-R-A-K-E Wiley Drake at gmail dot com Wiley Drake at gmail Dot com. Call me and let me know how to pray with you, how to pray for you, and we thank the Lord for the opportunity. Now, the title of today's show is Faithfulness. Faithfulness. And I'm not talking about my faithfulness. I'm talking about the faithfulness of God. The title of the show today in the archive will be Faithfulness of God faithfulness of God and I thank the Lord for faithful men like the hitchhiker and I thank the Lord that he allows me sometimes to be a faithful servant and I thank the Lord for all of my friends that are servants of the Lord God Almighty and I would ask you one other thing in our schedule that we put in there sort of on a regular basis is that on Tuesday morning on Tuesday morning at 7 o'clock, a group of pastors, sometimes as few as three or four, sometimes as many as a dozen, but a few faithful pastors come together once a week on Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. And by the way, if you would like to join us in this pastor's prayer meeting, if you join us, we meet at a local restaurant uh, here in the city of Orange. We meet at Marie Callender's. That's where we had breakfast and prayer and praise this morning at 7 o'clock. From 7 to about 8.30 before I come on the show. So we would encourage you to be a part. If you live in the Anaheim area, whether you're Southern Baptists or not, we would encourage you to join us. It is primarily a group of denominational Southern Baptist ministers of the gospel. And we would encourage you to join us and to be a part 
of the First Southern Baptist Church group as well as the Orange County Southern Baptist group. We meet on Tuesday mornings at 7 o'clock. You can call me or you can email me and I will text you back or email you back how you can join us for this pastor's prayer meeting. We've been on now 47 minutes and we're going to say uh, we want you to pray for another organization we've been talking about and talking to and we're going to talk to them uh, in the future uh, uh, a little bit more serious but it's an organization called B'nai Yosef North American that's B N E Y B'nai Yosef Y O S E F North America and they're talking about 40 days of repentance now this group B'nai Yosef North America is the restoration and reconciliation of the people of northern Israel, the house of Yosef, Ephraim. And the scripture for that is Ezekiel 37, verse 19. Pray for us as we pray with them. Right now they're doing a 40 days of repentance. That's what drew my attention to them. And I want to share with them even further and see if we can work together uh, to be a part here on the television program with them and what God is teaching us through them. And so we encourage you uh, to go to their uh, uh, website and check them out and let us, let us know, let me know what, what you think about their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They have a great website here dealing with all kinds of subjects and all kinds of situations. And we would encourage you uh, to be a part uh, with us, with them. And uh, they talk about all kinds of things, and we praise the Lord for them. Again, I'm going to give you the name of it, and you can check it out. And I would appreciate you letting me know what you find out about them. And that is the group called B'nai. B-N-E-Y. B'nai. And then capital Y-O-S-E-F. B'nai Yosef, North America. And check them out and let me know what you think about their progress and their favor on 40 days of repentance. This is a progression of the repentant heart introduction. 40 days of repentance. So please check them out and get back to me and let me know how they hold up in light of the Holy word of God because ladies and gentlemen that's what we need to look at and that's in Ezekiel in fact I'm going to share that with you we got a little bit of time here see if I can find uh, the book of Ezekiel it's over here somewhere after Psalms and Proverbs and Isaiah and Lamentations there we go we're going to go right now to Ezekiel 37 Ezekiel 37 uh, verse 19, and this is their verse. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. There's two sticks talked about there, the stick of Joseph and the stick of Judah. And so their group is called People of Northern Israel, the house of Yosef, Ephraim. They're found in Ezekiel 37, verse 19. And in verse 20, and I'll close with this, Verse 20 says, And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. May God help us as we work with these new friends in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to say to you at this point, uh, thank you for watching us today. Thank you for being a part of the show. I'm going to make my way up from the desk over behind the other desk where I can uh, indeed uh, terminate. And like I said, 
we're going to title today's show, Faithfulness of God. Faithfulness of God, because we know God is indeed faithful to us and with us. With that in mind, good day. God bless you. Remember, Wiley Drake, live at 5 here in California, will be on this afternoon at 5 p.m. God bless you, and have a great, great day.